Welcome to Interviewing the Experts. So, if you watched the previous episodes, I did a mini-series of financial books, you know, all in one big batch. I decided to add a couple more to that batch, so that is what we're doing today. And the first one that we're messing with today is actually not even a book, it is a YouTube video by Valuetainment, by Valuetainment, and it is called The 11 Skills That Millionaires Master. And I'm just going to walk through, give my insights on those you should go watch that video it's only like 25 minutes long so there's not really a reason why you can't go watch that go watch it it's good watch it in fact a lot of valuetainment stuff is good watch them so the first skill is persuasion you have to be able to convince people to do what you want a lot of time manipulation versus persuasion manipulation is getting people to do what you want against their better against their interests Persuasion generally is getting people to do what you want that is beneficial to them. Am I manipulating somebody when I get them to eat healthier? Or am I persuading them to eat healthier? That's how I draw the difference. And so you have to learn how to persuade people. You have to get them to act. Go watch the episodes on taking action. You have to get them to do stuff. You have to persuade them that your idea is um, good. You have, to <coughs> you have to persuade them to buy your product, to uh, hire you for your skills. Those are all persuasion. You have to persuade people to do what you, you need them to do in order for you to make money. The next one is reading people. Great thing to do for reading people is study subcommunication. Study how body language works and how tonalities work and all of that. And as you study it more and more in depth, the cool thing is when you learn something, it sticks out to you a whole lot more. Like you might not notice a little things that people do that will give you insights on them. But as you learn these skills, you're able to read people better and become more of a people person. A fun TV show, I'm not going to say it's the most accurate, I don't know. But a fun TV show is called Lie to Me. And it's basically a human lie detector. He makes his living by observing people and figuring out if they're lying or not. So that's a fun one, and that's a good way to at least get your mind around the ideas of reading people. The next one is he calls sharing the wealth. I call it the $20 rule. And basically what that is, is how many deals are you willing to do with me if I take $80 and you get $20? Um, we'll probably get one deal. You'll get the $20. I'll get the $80. I feel great. I made $80 out of the 100 but you only got 20, so you probably don't want to do that deal again. However, if I do a deal where I make $20 and whoever makes the deal with me makes $80, how many people do you think want to do that deal with me? Only the desperate will do it for the $20, but virtually everybody will do it for the $80. So while I only make 20 on that one, I'll get a 20 here, 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 because everybody wants to work with me. When when you work with somebody and they get rich, they'll want to work with you some more. That's kind of what he talks about. He talks about how um, employees number 11 at Facebook became super wealthy, all of that kind of stuff. So when you make money and everyone else makes money, everyone wants to help you make money. And that's what that skill is. It's sharing the wealth or the $20 rule. Next one is leverage. At least that's what he calls it. It's basically getting a team. You need people to help you. You can't do everything by yourself. You need to be able to leverage your time so that way you can do what is most effective for you while you let other people do other things. That goes back to the uh, don't do the $10 job, which I actually got from Valuetainment a long time ago. So go watch other videos of theirs. The next skill is recruiting. And that's along with the previous skill. And it's convincing people to work with you. You have to get them to want to help you. Have to, you have to find yourself an accountant. You have to find yourself a lawyer. You have to find yourself employees. If you're doing business, you have to be able to convince... There's a spider. <laughs> you have to be able to convince people that your dream is worth devoting their energy and their time into building. And that goes back to the, I guess, the, the sharing the wealth principle. Because if your dream is going to make them all rich, they're a lot more likely to hop on board with your dream and go where you're leading. So make sure that you 
learn how to recruit people, bring people into your dream and your vision. Next one is energy management. And I've already talked about this a little bit before, but it is so important that you are able to have the energy to be able to get what you need to get done. Because if you're tired, you're slept, you're dragging, you're not going to be as clever, you're not going to be as effective, you're going moving slower and not going to want to do it. When you're tired, you don't want to do it, you're not as disciplined. So make sure that you really focus on making sure that your energy is on point. Because if your energy sucks, your work ethic is going to suck. And one of the most important things to do is working really hard when it comes to success. The next one is how to process issues. Basically, it's crisis management. When something, when your plan goes awry, how are you going to handle it? Are you, do you have a plan B? Are you prepared? Have you thought up contingency plans? Are you good at flying by the seat of your pants, figuring out who you need to talk to to get it fixed? Um, and even not necessarily crisis, how do you just take care of regular everyday issues? If you get super annoyed at minor inconveniences, you might need to work on your temper. The next one is time management. I think I recently just did an entire principles episode on that by the time you're seeing this air. So go watch that. It might come out next week after this. I don't know off the top of my head, but I just did a principle episode for time management where all we did was talk about time management. So go listen to that, get some more in depth. Watch his video, he talks pretty good about it as well. Make sure that you manage your time, make sure that you create the schedule that you need and that you will actually do. Because it doesn't matter if you create a schedule that you won't do, if it's the proper schedule, if you're not going to do it, it doesn't matter. The next um, skill is how to manage money. That's what this entire little mini series on money has been about. Learning how to take care of your money. If you don't know how to take care of your money, it won't matter how much money you make, because you're just going to lose it all. You can just look at people who have made massive ink, have made it in more of the artist kind of fields, like actors and um, musicians and athletes. They make millions upon millions every single year, and most of them are massively in the hole because they never learn money skills. So you need to learn money skills because even if you make tons of money, you're going to lose it all if you don't know how to manage your money. Next skill is to be aggressively patient. I love how he talks about this. Go watch it. Basically, you have to think of it as a battleground. You're fighting for your life every single moment, but you can't rush and get it over with. It's long term. You have to stick with it. And then the next, well, I get basically be aggressive today. Work at your butt off every single day, but also expect that it'll take 10, 20 years maybe. So that's what aggressively patient means. Work like it's the last day you can get things done, but also be willing to do it for such a long time. And then the last one is learning. Make sure that you learn. You're already 10 steps ahead of 99.9% .9 of people by listening to this podcast, by watching videos, by reading books, by educating your mind, by upgrading the information that you have access to to be able to develop yourself and continue growing you're already leaps and bounds beyond everybody else and just make sure you keep doing that the average millionaire the average ceo reads 50 plus books a year so make sure that you do that you might not necessarily need to do 50 books i do 300 books but i'm extreme figure out what you can do because that's more important than anything else actually doing it so I'm going to end that here for today, and I'll see you all next week.